Uh, good morning, everybody. Well, I guess for me, nine o'clock in the morning or just after nine. And for you guys in Canada, it's your Friday evening. And uh, my name is Larry Shane from Truth Malters and also Cavalan Whiskey Ambassador for Canada. But obviously, I'm not there right now. Not that I can complain because it's 26 degrees in the morning, which I was just telling Sean there from Five Vines and at the distillery, which is a great place to be. So as you can see behind me here, this is the Cavalan Distillery. And what we're wanting to do for the whole group over there is we'll walk through the, the distillery and show you guys a little bit about um, the setup and how everything's done and then go through and we got something special to do as far as the str process which i'll explain in great detail for you now there and afterwards of course the tasting uh, you guys have four expressions i believe there which are some good ones and i'm going to enjoy them myself so if i start drinking more than i'm talking i apologize but that happens sometimes uh, and then also want to let you guys know, I just mentioned to uh, Sean as well, there is one part of the distillery as soon as we get in there after a couple of minutes, it, I might get disconnected there. There's a bad connection there. If that happens, please hold on and I'll be right back within 30 seconds a minute. So, so, so we're going to get this all started here and everything. Uh, and what we're going to do then is as you can see, I'm just going to show you guys around here first. So this distillery in Taiwan is in Ilan, Taiwan. And this area is just gorgeous. It's, it is a very, very relaxing, nice place to have a distillery. Uh, it's a quiet, quiet area, very natural. And as you can see, this one behind me is Spirit Castle, which I'll go upstairs later when we're doing the tasting. And up in the back there, this is actually the mountains, um, the snow mountains where they get their water from. So everything's sourced from the distillery. Everything's done, you know, right around the distillery. There's no big, uh, you know, bringing stuff in from somewhere else or having to, you know, get this brought in from anywhere. The distillery, they bring in some of their yeast and different things. Um, sorry, some of their grains and stuff too from other countries. But as far as the distillation process, the bottling, the packaging, everything is done here at the distillery in Ilan, Taiwan. Now, as I mentioned, there's a one dead part that I'm going to be getting into here right away. So if it doesn't work out, I apologize for that, but I'll be right back on. And because I have the headset on, Sean's going to be walking us through. If you guys have questions, please type away and let us know, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. So this part right here is the whiskey distillery, which is the entrance to the building here. And I'm going to show down here. And if you see farther down on the right-hand side there, uh, that's the warehouse, the taller part at the end there. That's five-floor warehouse. And we'll talk about that when we come out on the other side here. And then back here, again, is what I was talking about, the Spirit Castle, which is where we'll be doing the tastings. And they have the DIY and the different things and stuff there. So we'll take a look. I hope everyone's ready to enjoy some drinks. I don't know if you guys are going to get started right away. Sometimes it's nice to... Uh, have one soon but if you can hold on I promise I'll do my best to walk you through and explain all the drinks and stuff to you and the whiskeys that we're trying today. Now when you come in here right away and as I said it's nine o'clock so we're already starting to get some people coming in. They have their cast set up here and later on I'll explain if people aren't aware of the cast numbers and their meanings. Now we know in Taiwan and for Cavalan whiskey that they don't uh, focus on the age. And they say it, they're all uh, NASs, but we will talk about the age and you can come down and figure it out right to the day and the time on how old these whiskeys are. Now, when you come in here, they have the malt experience area where you can actually get right in there. You can smell this malt that they're using. That's the regular one here and the PD malt. And it's a very hands-on area that they have here. They talk about the different yeast and the process for this. And going through, I hope you guys, this is the area I'm a little worried about getting cut off on right away, but hopefully it sticks around and be, it's okay. So let's talk a little bit about the cast here. So the cast we use, we have the bourbon barrels, uh, which they're 190 liter ones, and the port cast, they're 225 liters. And these ones are American oak as well, uh, same along with the bourbon barrels. Now the brandy cast here, which I know we haven't had for a few years, still maturation. Um, these ones here are 250 liters. Also American oak and a lot of great notes from those ones. The Vino Barrique, which if you ever get a chance to try, which was 2015 world's best whiskey. Um, it's a great, great whiskey. And these are wine casts uh, and also uh, these ones here, 250 liters as well. And you can see a little bit of stuff on 
how the casts are created. And one of the important things here that they try to show, I don't know if you can see very good with the reflection here, is the floor that they have here. Now this gets to be very, very thick. So these are, I'm just gonna use my hand here. So up to here, it's actually filled right now. So they did this just to show you. And if you're ever here, you can really see it gets to be a thick, thick floor that goes on the top of those tasks. Coming over here, you can see the different char levels. Now you're lucky enough that Sean and the guys at Five Vine set this up where we're gonna actually see the cast and them doing the STR, which is going to be the charring the different levels. And they're gonna be doing one of those for you, which is just something incredible to experience. And I really appreciate it and love it just for the smell alone. It's a, a fantastic thing to see. Now, uh, what I can see over here, I'm hoping you guys can all get a little closer. So we have the port, this is the brandy. Sorry, the brand new Nume, X Bourbon, and the Hogshead. And this is showing in Taiwan uh, the difference that they have, what happens with the new make, and as far as the color alone in just six months, 12, 18, 24, 36. And they're already getting this color in 48 months. So I'm going to start from this end. So you have your new make. This is just sitting in a port cast. And in just 48 months, that is the color. Now that kind of color, um, some places it's going to take, you know, a long, long time for that. You can get up to 15, 20 years and not even get that color. Now, when we're talking about the Oloroso, new make, six months, 12 months, 18, 24, 36, and that's 48 months. So the Oloroso, I mean, take a look here. You can see what happens. Now people have asked why, are they adding anything or what is, how is Cavan getting this color? What are they doing for it? Nothing is added here. It's all natural. But what they have here is as far as the climate. The climate here gets very, very hot and it's pretty much hot year round. They do have a couple of the winter months. But even in that time, it's still very warm. And that opens up the wood a lot. And you're getting a lot more of interaction with wood with new make interaction, which we'll discuss more after the STR too. So right here is showing you, these are some barrels through real whiskey in there. Um, and these ones here showing two years, four years, six years. And this is why some people have seen some whiskey from Cavalan looks dark as Coca-Cola. Again, there's no added uh, caramel coloring, nothing like that. It's all natural. So up on this part right here, uh, I'm going to say it again. I hope it doesn't cut out. And if it does, just bear with me and I'll get through as quick as I can for everybody. So these are the mashing bins here. Now, in this process, the mashing tank is filled with the grits and uh, the hot water is added for the extraction. And this is where the wort and everything is created. Now, for in Kavlan, the whole dist or this process for mashing takes about eight hours for them to complete from start to finish for this. And so far, we're still connected. I hope I'm going to just kind of walk through one part a little faster. And then we have the fermentation here. So the fermentation, as I mentioned before, everything is done on site. And this is only one area. This part is open for anyone can come through, walk through. You don't have to make uh, any kind of reservations or anything. This is open to the public to come and check out. It's only part of the distillery. The distillery is much larger. They also have in the back area as well. Now, as you can see on this side, the distillation. So uh, Cavalan does double distillation, which is very important that people have asked. And you can take a look at some of the casts, oh, sorry. Some of that they have here set up and everything. Uh, now this distillation, as I mentioned, double distillation. And if you look in the back here, when it's going there, I, it's actually going a little bit right now. You can see as far as the spirit and the four shots and things coming through here. Now I've had been lucky enough before to try those myself actually. And I know that's not drinkable stuff and that's not what it's for, but I've tried to learn about Cavalan and the taste of it right from the very beginning when it starts the process and through all along the stages all along. And I've actually that stuff was quite drinkable, which was surprised me. But uh, back to showing you guys what's around here. So over here on my right, you can see they have more of their stills. And this is one story people always ask us about um, as far as the other stills. So they had heard that they used different stills at the beginning. So what happened, and I'm going to get around to the other side here. So the story for Cavalan is the Lee family, which is actually, uh, they are 
the King Car family, um, which they own the King Car, which is the conglomerate, and Cavalan is one of the one of their babies, pretty much is what they try to say that they did. So what happened was uh, when it was finally legal to create whiskey in Taiwan, Mr. Lee, which is the owner of the King Car, this was a passion of his, and he wanted to get this done. It was something that he's always wanted to do. And money wasn't an issue. They just wanted to get it done and do it properly. So they brought in the best in the industry in the late Dr. Jim Swan. Uh, and he took this on as something he wanted to do, something that he thought he could, you know, take care of the climate and really an experience and create fantastic whiskey in Taiwan. Now with him, he got Ian Chung, uh, who joined the team, who's currently left though, but he was part of the team. And at first they brought in... <coughs> I'm going to move over here. So they brought in first these stills here. Now, when you are a very large company um, and you're doing something that you love, you don't care about the cost of it. You care about the quality. So they had these brought in and late Dr. Jim Swan and Ian, they had their new mate going through these. They tried it for a little while and it just wasn't what they wanted. So these, st these stills here, they were left unused for a little while. What was happening, it was creating whiskey that was too sweet for them. It's not, it wasn't their goal. So they left these alone and ordered the whole new stills that you see behind along with some other ones. And these are then later, which are the stills that are used for the gin. So they wanted something perfect. And again, it wasn't about the cost. It just, this is something that I'm sure most companies, most distilleries would have still kept on using. But to them, it wasn't the, exactly what they wanted. So they put them aside. And then they got the new stills and they use it for the gin later on. So it goes to show when you're really serious about uh, creating great whiskey and there's something little in the taste, something that you might not think is exactly what you want, you change it. It's, you know, you don't settle for it. And that's one thing they don't do here at Cavan is settle for anything. Now, behind me here, I just flipped around. You can see here, this is the first floor of the warehouse. Now the warehouse here, one thing that's very interesting in Taiwan you'll notice is they have their casts stacked up. They have them on four levels and they have four casts together standing up and they're tied up. The reason for this, I'm gonna put a little closer maybe get a little bit clear, is due to earthquakes. So their earthquakes are common here. We had a decent one about a week and a half ago. And this is just safety for the cast so that they don't fall over and there's no issues with that in the warehouse. And I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt. It shakes up the cast, the new make as well, and gets better interaction with the wood. So they have this going through, and it's something that's very, very important in Taiwan to keep that. There has been a couple that have fallen over when the earthquakes are quite large, but for the most part, this does its job and does what it's supposed to do. Down there, you can see some of the first casts that they ever did, and those are signed by some people who come in here, uh, very important in the industry that helped them out as well. So. It's nice to see this is the first time that I've walked through here without the connection getting cut. I hope it didn't show on my end, so hopefully it didn't show on yours. And uh, starting to fill up behind me a little bit, so I'm going to get out of this one area. So again, this area, for anybody who comes, they can walk through here, and there's no problem. You don't, as I mentioned, you don't have to make a reservation or anything. And you can come in there and enjoy it and take your time and walk through. Now, coming out of this side, so this is the warehouse, which we just showed the first floor. Now, the warehouse here in Taiwan, we have five levels, and this is very important to their maturation. Each level, uh, they don't do any controlling temperature, temperature control, except for sometimes opening the windows. So that's about it. Now, what they do here, though, that's very important, is the larger cast, because of the angel share in Taiwan, which gets up to 10 to 14%, which is insane. We just did a virgin oak cast, which only yielded 57 bottles. So from... When you have a 200 liter, 250 liter cask and you're only getting 57 bottles, you know the angel share is massive. So they have to put the larger casks on top here. And not only for that reason, but they found out that those ones open it up more to the heat that they're getting. Uh, that's helping again, the interaction uh, with the wood and the new make. And you can look on here, the five floors and just down a little bit, you can see some construction underway. So that's warehouse number three. This is warehouse one, right behind it, exact same size, shape, everything is warehouse two and they have warehouse three going up over there and in total production here they could do up to 10 million liters a year they're at about an 85 90 percent uh production going right now so there is still room for more for them to do and looking on the other way over here so this just show you that's the door that we went in on that side the grounds here 
for the distillery is massive. It goes all the way to the very, very end. I don't know if you can see my finger, but going way down there, they have the convention center. The convention center has a full on uh, art galleries there that they have and also a place for musical where they put on different shows. Uh, the Lee family is very into the arts and music as well. And they like to support local talent here. Now this part in front of me here, this is a great, great place to enjoy. This is called Spirit Castle. So as you can see right here, and this one is two levels and Spirit Castle is, you can go in here and enjoy your drinks, enjoy your time and uh, just so you know, too, this is family oriented place. But what I mean by that is anyone on um, any age can come through uh, with their family and stuff here. Just going to get temperature checked here. All right, I'm good to go. Uh, yeah, sorry. Anyone any age can come with their family. Of course, the drinking, uh, they're not supposed to be drinking. You're under 18. It's more of a newer law in Taiwan. It was quite open a while, a while ago, a few years back. But you come here there are some areas that children can't go where the parents can go and enjoy their drinks and stuff but overall you can bring the family here and enjoy yourself so for guys girls anyone who's got children bring them through if you guys get a chance to come here and throw them outside in the grass to play and go upstairs and enjoy drinks <laughs> but one thing that's really good here uh tasting area so if you see here they say the next session 9 30 9 35 and they have this every 30 minutes 40 minutes and what this is you come down here, and when it is that time, you sit down and you get to enjoy some whiskey at a great cost of zero. Zero dollars. Come here and drink for free. Uh, that's one heck of a deal. So you sit down, and they show the different kinds of whiskeys and stuff, and they talk about it a little bit for you. And you get to really experience the great taste of this stuff at a fantastic price. And they do this. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Taiwan the Cavon Distillery actually for the third time has been awarded a, for attraction of the year in the whiskey industry. They get over a million people coming through here each year uh, easily. And even now with COVID and different things that have been going on, those numbers are still very, very high. So it's incredible. And it's little things like free whiskey that probably bring a lot of people like myself <laughs> coming here often. But if you take a look behind me too, you can see they have casts set up and I'm going to go a little closer. So some people ask, oh, are they real? Or are they ever really filled? Well, you can tell right there by taking a look. Love that smell. Yes, these are real casts, okay? They have been used, they have been filled. And Cavan, they will reuse their casts for a lot of different things. Uh, as I mentioned, they're involved with art and music. And they're going to use these casts and uh, maybe for different things outside, which we can show you for painting, uh, doing different things, giving back to the community as far as artworks and different things. And here's some ideas, if anyone's ever wondering what to do with empty bottles. So again, the artistic side of Cavalan, right here. So they have some of these filled up where they've actually taken out the bottom of the bottle and made artwork to put inside. So anyone that's watching with uh, five vines there, if you're artistic, give it a shot, send in a photo here. I'm sure they'd love to see these things. So this also has the second floor, uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the STR um, and this and later we'll go up to the second floor and I'll show you guys around that has the DIY in the tasting room. We'll sit down and enjoy the drinks. So STR, uh, this is something that is not open to the public at all. You can sometimes be lucky enough to see it through a window, uh, but we're going to get right in there. Sean was asking about this and he's very excited that we're able to do this for you guys. Uh, so we're going to go in. Now, the STR process, if you don't know, uh, the S is for shave, the T is for toast, and the R is for the rechar. And what this does, and I'll show you guys a little closer, but what it's really doing is it's getting rid of unwanted, unwanted things that are left in the cask first, the barrel, and then that's the shaving part. The toasting, they're heating it up and getting it ready, opening it up a little bit, opening up almost as if you're opening up the pores of the wood. And then for the rechar, uh, they're cranking it up and depending on what they need to do whether it's a medium or a high char is what they're doing and that really opens up the wood completely at which point they add in the new making stuff now up until last year late last year this was only ever done in taiwan for their vino break the wine ones uh, which was red and white wine cast but they've recently started doing it with some of the peated the new the new peated that they bring in and 
um, people are saying, how come you don't do it with everything? Is it because of costs and this and that? It's not, it doesn't work with everything. Uh, this is one thing Dr. Jim Swan checked and they tried and tested everything and you can't do it with every kind of cask. You have to be selective on it. It's not going to work properly. They found out with the wine cask, it really brought out a lot of great flavors and which must have been the right decision because as I mentioned earlier, it won 2015, world's best whiskey. And then with the peated one, if anyone's tried that yet, you'll notice there are some similarities in there and it definitely helps out. It definitely makes it some great tasting whiskey. So over here, this is going to be the STR where we're going to be going in to see. So thus behind it is the bottling plant. And these three windows you see up here in the middle, this is for the, where they call it the rechar area, the char area. And that is where they have the process that we're going to go take a look at. So the big silver doors there are locked for visitors. They're, you're not able to go in. But today they're going to show us uh, for you guys over there. And we're going to get right up and close personal with that. Now, one time when I was doing this, uh, just a word of advice, I'm quite close to it. My phone got so hot, the whole thing shut off. So I'm going to be a little bit farther back, but I'm going to try to show you guys as close as possible uh, what exactly this process is. because. It is something that a lot of other distilleries are doing now, and there's a reason for it. But again, Dr. Jim Swan, this is his invention, uh, his creation, and something that he tried here, and it was a way to deal with some of these casts and make great flavors out of them while being in Taiwan and having to worry about the climate and different things in the heat. So we're gonna go take a look through those doors and get everything set up over there. But before I do, I'm just gonna show you guys where, so if you look out here right now, this is the warehouse that we were at uh, just inside there. And we we're over to this left side right here is where we were inside. First floor of the warehouse over there. And there's the new one that they're creating and the third uh, warehouse over there that they're starting. Now, how big is the distillery here? Well, here's an endless walking <laughs> corridor. And this keeps going, as I mentioned, they have at the other side there, um, they have their area there with the art room. Um, they also have meetings and different things and stuff there. And it's actually great. You can go check that out yourself and you can see different things. There's a lot of stuff about whiskey. Now they do have a whole area that's also for whiskey art, which is something it's, it's a trek to get over there. It takes a little while, but if you're ever interested, uh, maybe we can do something in the future, buy vines and show everybody that area. But for today, what we're going to do is get the STR checked out and show everybody exactly what this is now um, i'm hoping everyone can hear me okay and i'm hoping i'm not talking too fast but i am trying to get you guys through this i know it's friday most importantly if you guys are like me at all i'm sure you're also wanting to try those drinks and everything and get started on that so um, we're gonna get through this in one second I'm just gonna wait for one car to go across here and let me just show you over here so this is the rechar area which flip this around, you can see here, and they're showing the cast and everything, and they're getting everything set up for us now, and they'll come and open up the door. And just a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. Uh, I like it. Elan actually rains quite a bit, so it's nice to get out here and have weather like this where you guys can see everything and taking a look around. And we'll be walking through there in a moment. So let me just show one thing here now. When we mentioned about the third warehouse that they can be putting up in the back there, there's a room where they could be doing up to eight warehouses, I believe here. The, as I keep mentioning, it's a massive, massive area. And it's something that hopefully in the future they get that big, but we're gonna be seeing how it goes and they keep making great whiskey. That's all we care about. So here we see guys. So let's take a look. The doors are open. So we are going into the recharring area. Now, if it gets a little loud, I apologize when they're doing as far as the charring and stuff, but we will see how it goes. So perfect today. Day's just starting. So they have nothing else on the go except here for you guys there and everyone at Five Vines and everyone watching today. And if we take a look, I'll start over on this end. So as I mentioned, STR, S for shaving. Now these are the casts that are, are set. Uh, they're gonna be ready to be shaving down and go through the process. They've already checked them. And then what they do here in this area, I'll show you just quickly on this. So they set the cast down here. 
And it's a very, 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 if you can look in there, you can see some of the shades. So they take a very, very thin layer that the caster put on and imagine just uh, as if a knife, a blade is swinging around inside there and it's just shaving a very, very, very thin layer of any excess and unwanted stuff that might still be left on the cast. And by doing so, they're getting rid of those flavors and stuff that people might not want and that really affects the whiskey. And the way it's set up is like this, this is one, a finished product. So this one would have already went through and they would have taken off that thin layer. Now that is the S, the shaving. Now afterwards, the shaving, go over here and they're gonna do the T. The tea is the toasting. Now, toast is a great idea because I haven't had breakfast yet. Uh, but <laughs> what the toasting is, is almost, well, I guess it's exactly what it sounds like. They take these casts, and again, it's not all the casts, it's the wine casts, and then recently repeated ones. And they take these, and as you can see right here, and there's the cast, so they'll, they'll slide them right on. And when they go right on, these are put at about a 250 degree temperature for approximately 30 minutes. Sometimes that changes depending on the cast, but that is the norm for it. So as I said, the cast will fit right on like a glove and it's heated up. Nothing is done with it. It's just spinning around and it's heating that. And that is toasting it up, getting it ready for the rechar, or getting it ready for rechar, which really, really opens up. So as I mentioned, about 250 degrees and about 30 minutes is how long this process takes. Now, once this is, once this is ready, uh, they bring them over here. And they get right over here to this area. And this area is where they're doing. Right here is they have one ready that they're going to be putting on press. And this is the rechar. So this one, I think someone's asking about the fuel. Consider it like as if it's a barbecue or propane kind of thing is what they're using for this one uh, coming straight up. So sorry, take a look here. And this is for the rechar. I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to let you guys see what this is. And when this starts going, uh, the smells that you get from this is just incredible. I absolutely love this. And I'm about uh, eight, ten feet away, I guess, from this. So you guys take a look here. And this is what happens. Again, I won't talk. I'll let you guys just enjoy this. So again, the majority are a medium to high, and they'll do that based on what the barrels are. There's that lovely smell. Now it's getting hot, of course. And the only thing that they will do then is they'll spray it out and then let it naturally burn off. And that right there is how the STR is done in the rechar. Now, if you take a look inside here, you can already see that the pores are all opened up. Uh, that wood is now ready and will be transferred over. These barrels will be transferred over and they'll add that new make in there. And this is how you're getting such intense reaction with the wood. They've gotten rid of all the unwanted things with the shaving, yes, 
they've got it ready to be charred uh, as far as with the tea, the toasting, and then this is the rechar area. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. So that is how the STR is done. And very hot. I don't know if you can see, but I'm sweating good right now. <laughs> but it's such a great thing to see how they do this. And you can really, you, you get understand it and you get the understanding of how that would make a difference with a whiskey, with a new make and in the final result. And one of the great things they do about this too, it doesn't, as I mentioned a couple of times, it doesn't work with every cast, but also they have to be very, very selective on which cast they're using because you're opening it up, which means you're getting all the flavors from that cast. Now, if you had a poor cast selection, well, you're going to get a shitty whiskey too. I mean, not everything's going to be perfect. So yeah, it's very, very important from the very start is getting the cast selection. And then you can apply this kind of process to the SDR process. So I'm just going to show from outside. So if you are here, uh, you won't be able to get in there usually because of safety. Obviously, you're that close. But if you're on the outside here and they are doing it, you can take a look through the windows and you'll get a chance to see it. So we're going to walk over back to Spirit Castle, get this tasting going. I don't know if maybe Sean's already got you guys drinking. <laughs> I, I suspect that lots, uh, lots of the people here are already enjoying a dram or two. Um, Larry, one question came up from Richard Angle, but um, how much time typically passes between charring and filling? Um, they try to do it actually as soon as possible. Uh, even getting it done in this, oh, sorry, yes, up to the second floor. Uh, getting it done even within a day. They usually, I know because I've seen it, once they have them over there put aside, they'll have a, a daily setup. Not a daily setup, when they are doing it, maybe they'll put through eight to 12 uh, casts that they're doing and they haul it right over and get it filled because the point of it is to get it hot. Um, I would say regularly, quite often, you might even be within the first hour. I mean, once they've went through that thing and they've had them all charred, boom, 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 they load them up and take them right across, which they don't have to take them far. Right across the, sorry, I just turn this over. So that's where they started and they just take them right across to the other building there and they'll get it filled up there uh, to the warehouse. So they want it hot, they want it. The reason they're doing it is to get that interaction right away. So as soon as possible. So we're going to get over here now, go over to Spirit Castle. Now, this place, um, <laughs> I say to, I spent a couple of days here stumbling out of this place, uh, the Spirit Castle, because, well, first you can go down the first floor and try. You can have some of their base whiskey and try that for free and stuff. But upstairs, you can try anything. And you'll see that right away that there, any whiskey that they have um, that is available in the market here in Taiwan, you're able to try that right up to the premium. So you don't have to, uh, you go down and I'll show when we go in there, you go into the gift, gift shop there and you go and tell them which ones you wanna try. You'll go up to the second floor, you sit down and then you give those, give those a shot and you enjoy those. And you try to make it down from the second floor out the front door. Now, don't worry guys, there is an elevator because you know, a couple of bad steps after a few drinks on the second floor might not be the best thing to do. But let me just show everybody here. So right here, so this is the front door, the main door of Spirit Castle. And they call that, I've been asked, is it because it's spirits or is it because the spirit you feel, you know, after you drank a few drinks? Well, I'm not too sure. So again here, this is one of their measures here for as far as coronavirus and, uh, you know, making sure that things are set up properly here and don't get bad like they do in some countries. So over here, we have the gift shop. Sorry, flip that around for you. The gift shop over there, which you would go to the front desk there and, and tell them what you would like to go upstairs and try. Um, now, no, it's not all free once you get upstairs. If you're gonna go sit down there and try these higher end uh, whiskeys that they have, or even, uh, you know, anything. When you go to the tasting area there, you're not sure what they're gonna give you at that time, but you do have to pay for those, uh, obviously. And I'm just gonna take the stairs up here. So when we go up to the second floor here, now this area, they just redid it. Um, I believe it was finished around October, November of last year. And they made it, it's called the Garden Hall now. And these things were always here, but they just made it much, much more beautiful. A great thing, which I can understand why they want the visitor attraction. So I'll turn this around for you guys. Now, as I mentioned, King Carr, which owns Cavalier, one of their biggest things that made them famous 
is Mr. Brown Coffee. So it's not only the whiskey, they have a lot, many, many other things they do, but Mr. Brown Coffee is one of their big ones. And I'll go actually around this way here. So up on the second floor here, if you look right across, you can see the Cavalan Garden Hall. Now, Mr. Lee loves his Christmas. This big tree behind me is up year round. Uh, they, the family, most, the majority of them have went to the US and studied and they're very, very into the US culture and different things they do and Christmas to them is a very important thing. Um, not really, not because of religious things, but more of a celebration of spending time with family, which is what people in Taiwan, they do that a lot with their Chinese New Year as well. So it's more of just, they saw in the US and Canada that that's you know, when people get together with family and enjoy time together. Now let's take a look over here. So going into the garden hall here. So garden hall has three areas. Uh, the left, we have the DIY. In the middle, this is a nice bar, full bar, sit down and drink with beer as well. And then the tasting room over there. So I'm gonna take you into the DIY room quickly. Now, if you guys come here, this is something you must, must try. Um, they're smaller bottles. It's a, as far as size is going, you're only getting a 300 ml. The price that you would get or pay for these is 1,800 NT. So for Canadian dollars, divide that by about 21 is what you're looking at. And you end up with, you have a, a box and the bottle that looked like the one that was just shown in the picture now. What is DIY? Well, you're your own master blender when you come here. So you have choices of four casts, the sherry, a bourbon, and come over here. We have the port and a refill. And this is just showing you what you're getting in some of those. So if people are wondering different things. Now they give you a little bit of tasting notes on them. And what I mean by you're a master blender is you sit down here with your friends. There's no time limit. You pay your 1800 NT, um, which I'll quick math. You're looking about, uh, what's that, 90, $80 Canadian. You sit down here and you drink. You try it, you get your little vial um, set up to do proportions and you check out how much you want of the sherry, how much of the port, you put them together and you keep trying this until you maybe realize you want one, uh, let's say one fifth refill, you want two of the port and one bourbon and one sherry and you put it all together and you keep notes. And if you didn't like it, well, you just tell them, they refill it and you try it again. You keep going until you find that perfect amount then you take that over to their desk and in front of you there, they will use that. Obviously they, they do the math and they up the levels to get your 300 ml bottle. So for that price, you can sit there and drink as much as you want. Now I recommend guys, uh, this is called trial and error. First pick the one you like, get the taste first before you start drinking too much. Cause by the end of it, you might be like, what the hell did I just create when you get home? So <laughs> be sure to sit there and really, you know, get focus on being the master blender first and then enjoy the drinks afterwards. And this bar that they have in the middle here. So another thing that Cavalan has, or the company King Car, I'm sorry, um, is called Buckskin beer. And this is a German beer that they have. And there's many different kinds of it. On tap here, uh, I believe they have eight different ones. So you can come here and sit down. They'll even put some cocktails together that you can do here if you just want to try the whiskey straight or beers. And you can sit down here now. This area, uh, you as far as children are, they cannot come in the garden hall here. So they're behind the gate. So it's not too bad though. You just leave them over there behind you. Between the arches, just throw the kids over there for a little bit, no problem, and come and enjoy the drinks and stuff here. And over here, the final area where we're gonna do our tasting and stuff is fitly called the tasting room. Now, this is the one I had mentioned if you go to the first floor and you let them know what it is you're wanting to, to drink and they'll get it prepared for you. Now, when you come in here, there are also casts and you can see right here, so you can try stuff right from the cast. So they have vino, yes, direct from the cast, you can try that. Bourbon, Madeira, brandy, and newly released the punch in, which is only for the artist series. So just by looking at these casts you're seeing right here, uh, Vino, I mean, world renowned, amazing whiskey. 
the bourbon one is one that the Lee family really loves because it shows the new make characteristics as far as a lot of tropical fruits and stuff. Madeira, almost impossible to come by. The brandy, haven't been able, they haven't actually bottled it in, I believe it's four years now, maybe a little longer. And the punch-in was only the artist series. The reason they chose these ones to have here is they want it to be a special experience for sure when you do come to the distillery. You can try some things that you won't be able to get anywhere else. Punchin has never been bottled, excluding the artist series. And Madeira, there's only been a handful of casts that have ever left Taiwan. And here's, here's a little fact for you guys. They've actually never bottled Madeira in Taiwan as far as selling it locally at the distillery. So that's one thing that um, international, we've been lucky to get a couple of casts of, but overall it's something you're not going to find yet. They have done some of the small, uh, the 300 ml bottles that they did is more of a, a gift thing that they did for some people and to start out uh, when they were doing that and they want to show people the taste and get them to try those. Now behind the bar here, you can see they have all the expressions that Cavalan does carry. And these will be, there's the smaller Madeira I was talking about. And those are some of the ones that are available in Canada. Now, the new ones here being Distillery Select number two, which is a fantastic one uh, in your guys' lineup today. And the Concert Master, the, uh, sorry, the Sherry Cast Concert Master, which is, uh, great, great whiskey. And up at the top, and the reason that uh, as far as doing the tasting and setting it up the way it was, we wanted to have the, excuse me, I'm just going to pull a chair out here. The Oloroso, the Sherry Oak being the last one, because it's more of a Sherry Bomb, we didn't want to overdo as far as the taste or anything like that, leaving that one for the end. But I'm going to show you a little bit of the bottles here. And uh, one second. Kyle, could you grab me one bottle of the Vino just to show the cast number? Thank you. So just to take a quick look here. Now we were talking about the date earlier. Now I'm going to try to flip my phone around here so I can put this down for you guys. So bear with me for a moment. Yes, thank you. All right, better than a cross shot there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, we're all set up here. So um, the reason I wanted to talk to you guys and I asked uh, to get a vino here is to discuss as far as the age. So, you know, people always say no age statement. And what that means is Cavan doesn't focus on the age. They're, they, To them, that's not the importance. The importance is the final product and the quality of the whiskey. And I'm in this room now, so I'm taking off that mask. Can't drink with that on. But if you take a look here, uh, this one here, the date on here, it's saying W15-1203. 022A. Now the W is for wine cask. So the first letters of that you see these codes that are on all the Solus bottles and anything that's a single cask, the first letter or the first two letters is the code to tell them what type of cask. W happens to be wine, uh, B bourbon, and there are some other ones that they that they go through as well. And then the next two numbers, which I said this one is W15. The 15 is the year, so that would be 2015. And followed by the next two numbers on here, we have uh, one, two, which would be December and followed by the day, which would be 03. So it'd be, this would be a 2015, December 3rd is when this bottle was distilled and put into the cask. And then the last three numbers, uh, 022 for this one, it has an A, that's the cask number. The A is not important. The A is actually just for internal use that they kept track of. And we've actually been talking to them and they're going to be pulling, they had A and they had B and then they had nothing. They're going to be pulling those right off because it was starting to confuse people. It had nothing to do with quality. It had nothing to do with anything um, except just how they were keeping track of some of their casts. So in the future, you won't even see the letters on. This is going to be the number. So, okay, how do we find out how old it is? Well, 2015, December 3rd. Well, that doesn't tell us anything about when it was bottled. So if you turn on the back here, uh, you will see a stamp here. That's a date stamp. Now this one's date stamped 2020 and 11, oh, sorry, 1110 or 1118 here. So you do the math then. If it's from 2015 distilled and then it was bottled in 2020 and you look at the month, you can get right down to the date. And this actually shows the time too. And it goes right into mm -hmm. the minutes. So you can find out almost exactly, exactly how old that that whiskey is. So... Well, going back to them about not focusing on the age, it's not that they don't do age statements, is that they don't, that's not their thing. They don't care about uh, selling the age and stuff. What they care about is that quality and they let the whiskey speak for itself. So 
Cab line, yes, it's a non-age statement. Does it tell you the age? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. So yes, it does tell you the age, but it just doesn't go into detail. It's not selling that. Uh, we've talked to people about this. Well, are they going to be doing stuff in the future? Are they going to ever do an age statement whiskey? Um, possibly. Hope so. But again, that wouldn't be, that's not their main thing. That's not what they want to focus on. Now, I'm just going to show you here. So this is the lineup I have. And I want to check with Sean to make sure this is how you guys are set up as well. As far as distillery select number two here, the first one. And is this your order that you guys were doing? And then the concert master and the X, actually, I believe these two were switched around. Yeah. I so I'm going to move. Sorry. It goes straight, is that for you? Yeah. I and mean, those are the, we have the, the bourbon, the Oloroso, and then the number two. And then of course the main bottle everybody has is the, the concert master Sherry. Yeah. I'm going to move that one to third after the bourbon then, if that's not a problem here. So let me just set this one up a little what differently for mine. Uh, for me, just story select number two, I believe. And then we should do, so keep that one as is. And I'm going to do the bourbon here a second. So I'm going to move these over. And your sherry cask, finished concert master here, third. And then the sherry oak, the last, if that's all right with you guys. So just so you see how I'm going through here. So this is how I'll introduce stuff and talk about it. And please jump in, ask questions about stuff. And I got a couple, I did uh, want to let you guys know some of the awards. So I do have some printouts that I brought for personal thing because I cannot remember all the awards Cavalina has won. They've, they're, I mean, they're in the four or 500 awards that they've got. And when I say that, that means gold or better. For Cavalina, if it's not a gold, they don't even consider it an award. <laughs> so if they have silver or they have bronze or they have different things to them, they they strive for more they strive for the best so they keep track in those accolades thank you very much um of gold or better so some of the things i have here are just going to be showing the different awards so if we're going to the first one okay i'll get right to this one because i know if you haven't started drinking we got it it's been a while this one distillery select number two and i'm going to pull out the awards that they have for this one so this is a very very new whiskey and it's only been put in one oh one award show so far, and that was for the IRS, the International Revenue of Spirits, not the Revenue <laughs> Service for Cash Guys. And this was awarded a 2020 gold uh, for this one. Now, just to take a look at the bottle here. So you can see this one actually says number two on. The distillery select number one, the original ones or some of the older ones, they don't say number one on it. It just says distillery select. It's the exact same whiskey. So don't worry, the new the ones that say number one was after them, they decided to do number two. They have to differentiate between it. So they added the number one on that. So don't think you're getting different whiskey in that or anything. But getting right to this one, I mean, you're getting a kind of a light golden ale on this, golden dawn on this one. Uh, lots of floral, floral notes to this. And when they did this whiskey, their big thing was uh, they felt it was more of a grass and floral thing, not a peat. Don't get that uh, mixed up when I'm saying peat. Obviously, there's nothing, there's no peat in this one, but it was more of an outdoors one. And they kept jumping to people saying, oh, it's like as if you're walking out in the forest or it's a nice weather and different thing. And you'll notice a lot of their advertising has been based towards that because they were getting that as well. As far as uh, you're outdoors, you're in, you're in that forest, uh, you're enjoying it now. Uh, a little bit of, you're getting a perfume of floral fragrance for sure. Uh, it's got some nice richness to it. But guys, I need to do this. This is my breakfast uh, to Sean, everyone, Five Vines, everyone watching. Cheers. I got to have a nice morning, morning drink with you guys. Cheers. So let's get on this one. Cheers. That's a perfect, perfect morning drink. Now, um, this one particularly, I'm getting, there is a little bit of woodiness to it, which is nice. It's not an overwhelming oak. Uh, you're getting that floral, you're getting that little wood. And I have a very clean, clean palate right now. As I mentioned, I haven't eaten today or anything. So this is my, my start. So I'm getting all those original tastes. And Sean, thanks for letting me enjoy this for breakfast. This is great. <laughs> you know what? That's the best way to drink whiskey is when your palate's just fresh, right? I mean, yeah, it, it sounds funny, but it actually is true. 
Well, I've heard a lot of uh, when they do whiskey tastings, um, as far as to doing judging, a lot of them will be early in the morning just for that, as you just mentioned, just to have that that clean palate going in the morning. So you're getting those actual tastes. It's not mixing on anything you've eaten throughout the day at all. Yeah, when I'm looking for, for new whiskeys, I mean, I, te- I like to book it first thing in the morning. And, mm. and because, you know, I haven't destroyed my palate with everything I've been eating all day. And yeah. Yeah. No, um, this one, they say is very you'll always hear very gentle whiskey. Um, gentle can be taken many different ways, but I think when, when I would personally say that, I just mean, it's, it's not going to kick you in the face. I mean, it, it is, uh, your this one bottled at 40%, uh, for mm-hmm. Cavalan, that's a low ABV, but it's a very nice whiskey. You can sip on and join. You're not, there's not a lot of complexity to it as far as, uh, you know, what was that taste? What did I just get? You can pick out those notes. You can pick out that floral, that little perfumish kind of taste to it that woodiness and just I'll use the elegant, uh, which is what I sometimes use for this one. It's just a very nice, subtle whiskey, but that taste stays with you a little while. Uh, I'd love to hear if anyone has any questions about this or if Sean, uh, your tasting notes on this or what you enjoy about this one. Hello. Um, I'll just let everyone know as far as casts for these ones. uh, These ones are, the distillery select number two is actually second fill ex bourbon cast is what they use for for these ones. And um, as far as the story select number one, you're getting a little different with that. But the number two, it works out perfect. You can always remember it's a second fill. So the number two is a second fill. Just happens to be that way uh, for these ones. And this one was a huge, huge hit in Taiwan. And as far as uh, some people do say the Cavalan, some of it's a little expensive. Um, personally, yeah, I mean, it is. You get out of Taiwan, you're getting, of course, your taxes and everything coming on. But I think what Cavon did is they they stick with their quality, they stick with what they're they're doing, and they brought in these other whiskeys that people can try to lead them into, you know, whether they should take that risk into getting into a little bit of a higher one because they still have amazing taste and they're showing you that they can do that at bottled at 40 and 46% as well. So I think it was a great job by Cavon to bring in something uh, like the distillery select number two so people can try, you know, because when you get up to a few hundred dollars a bottle, you want to if it's a new company or if people here in Taiwan, you want to trust it. You want to know that it has quality. So they've done a good job at that. And when I first came to Taiwan and I was trying Cavalan, uh, when I heard made in Taiwan, I was like, come on, that's not going to be good. That's going to be some garbage. But I was blown away, which is what really got me interested in Cavalan whiskey was taking it home and getting people to try something made in Taiwan. And being here this long, I have a little bit of the pride for that as well. Taiwan pride. So uh, I love what they're doing here with this. Uh, Sean, what are your thoughts on this one? I, I think it's a, a great, like, as you say, it's, it's a great entry point into Cavalan. It shows yeah. uh, the quality and the care that, that goes into the whiskey. Um, this is, yeah, I mean, this is a great whiskey that I could have, you know, every day. Like, it's a good house whiskey. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and it's, it, that's what I kind of saying by an easy one. You can sit there mm-hmm. and enjoy it. You're not going to, you know, be stumbling around right away. You can actually get those tasting notes yeah. and you can feel it and you can get onto something else later and not have your palate just, you know, boom, nailed and, t- you know, like overdone by it. It's just, you can enjoy those flavors and get those tastes out of it. Well, and it's, it's something I'm really happy that Cavalan has done because I've, I've been familiar with Cavalan for quite a few years and I, I have tried that, that, uh, you know, Barrique and I was blown away by, by it. And, and um, but trying to get people or convince people of the quality whiskey and the starting point is a few hundred bucks is tough when, when in Canada, but I think it's turning around and I, I sure hope that certainly the people on, on this uh, tour and tasting are, are starting to get an understanding of the quality that's coming from. from- well, yeah. I mean, Taiwan here, as far as being technologically advanced, the distillery is actually considered the top in the world for that. And I'm not just saying that because I'm working at Cavalan. that has been proven by people in the industry and what they do here. And like you just mentioned, it's at first, you might be hard, you know, to get people to try it. And it's not, not even really convincing them. It's just showing them that yes, it mm-hmm. can be worth that money. So you, you just nailed it. You start out with something like this, that, you know, is still high quality, but cheaper price where people say, okay, yeah, I've tried it. I will take that jump into something else. And the distillery select number two was perfect for that. Now your, your second one here, the yeah, ex bourbon Oak, um, we're jumping around ABVs a bit here. We're going up 6%, 46%. Now, the reason 
uh, personally, well, which I feel doing this one second is because it still has a lot of those lighter tastes to it. Now, X bourbon one on the nose here, I'm getting a ton of vanilla on this one right now. Uh, oh, wow. Sometimes it sucks when you try one of those ones, you just want to keep nosy, you don't want to drink. But a lot of vanilla on this one and Catalan's typical tropical fruit notes that they get. Uh, you get a lot of their guava things, exotic fruits, a little bit of banana. And I've had some that actually were exactly, I'm just getting ripe bananas a lot. This one's more of a lighter banana taste or nose to it, sorry. I'm just gonna have a little bit of water here. Try this one. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Sean. So this one, X bourbon oak, bottled again at 46%. Mm. Now, even jumping from a 40 to 46%, uh, I can notice the alcohol, the raisin alcohol for sure in this. A little bit of heat on this one, but it dies out quickly as far as the heat, and then I'm getting those flavors coming through. Um, this, these ones also, the casts they use are first fill, uh, bourbon, ca ex bourbon cast, sorry, that they're using for these ones. So it's, there's no second fill, no refill, sorry, refill cast or anything. These are first fill ex bourbon cast that they use for this. Uh, I get a lot more mouthfeel on this, on the sides of my mouth, a little bit on the roof compared to the first one as well. And I don't think that has to do with the extra ABV. I just think that is the profile and what they use for this. Oh, I love this one. Very nice. If, um, I don't know if people are, as far as they're commenting or anything there, but I would like to know what they're getting if people are picking up any of those vanilla notes or any exotic fruit stuff on those for these ones. Nice X bourbon. Very nice. Now, again, that one is 46%. And the first one, 40, 46. We're going to go back down to 40, then back up to 46. I see Michael, Michael, you in there? I uh, said he's getting the banana. Yeah, that's there. Um, it's, you do get that. And when you get into the Solus range, uh, being single cast and stuff, you do pick up some of them, like, as I mentioned, which is just a massive banana taste and those exotic fruits. And they vary a little bit being single cast. But even in the 46%, the you're getting those bananas, you're getting that vanilla and just a great one and sweet, a sweet, nice taste. And as I mentioned, the mouthfeel mouth feel on this one is very nice. And I, I always find it interesting how you can have different whiskeys and they just hit and kind of make different parts of your mouth jump out with those tastes that you're getting from those things. Now the water is just to cleanse my palate a little bit before we go on to the next one here. Um, <laughs> let's see Adam Clark mentioned you can really drink a lot of that yeah well that's why I mentioned it's good they have the elevator here too <laughs> on the second floor uh, when I, the other area there too across um, behind us too on the, up on the third floor and second floor there there actually is there are beds and stuff there I think when the family comes down maybe they drink a little too much or sometimes they have their VIP guests and special tastings where it turns into a party and somewhere to crash so that is there uh, for, <laughs> for some people, but now getting on to the third one, this one, and it just so happens, this is one that, uh, which when, when Bill mentioned this that, and that Sean had told him, this was the, the group bottle. Am I correct? The Sherry Cast finished the concert master. Yeah, that's the, the main large bottle that everybody's got. So I'm going to actually say this confidently is I am sure the majority of you guys are really going to enjoy this. Now I am really into cast strength whiskeys. That that's my thing for sure. I, I love really getting that, that boom, that kick from it. But when they introduced this bottle, uh, I was blown away when I, the color on it was, it's still a very light whiskey. Um, and I know color doesn't really affect taste, but I mean, it's always nice to see a dark, dark whiskey as well, but this one had flavors in it that just kept coming and coming out. And it took me probably by my third or fourth time where I think I finally got all those notes from it. Each time I was getting a couple new ones, a couple new ones. And, but right off the bat uh, for nose and stuff on this one, I personally 
I personally love this one. And when they introduce it, and I do love my sherry whiskey. So it was nice to see them come out with uh, 40% of sherry. Uh, you're getting that because they had the sherry oak, or also sherry oak at 46. They have the solas going between 52 to 59%. So it was nice to see them having a 40% for this one. And oh, now I'm just looking down here. I want to tell you guys some awards. So this one, um, very new whiskey. They've put this one into four different events right now. Uh, and WWA won actually 2020 Taiwanese single malt whiskey. It won beat out all the single malts. So they had this one. It wasn't in uh, as far as a cast strength or 40, 46%. It was named Taiwan's best whiskey. So that I found very interesting. It was up against other Taiwanese whiskeys, obviously, that pulled that off. Uh, the ISC, it was gold medal. And for the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, the SF uh, WSC, um, which to me is one of the world's best. And I think they're very honest there. There are some places sometimes you question it. San Francisco, they gave this one a double gold at San Francisco. And this beat out a lot of the Solus range as well. And then at the IRS Awards, it was also a 2020 gold medal. So a very new whiskey already put into four different, five different competitions, and it's nailing it all over. And rightfully so. If you haven't got into this one, I'll enjoy my sip with you here. Cheers, Sean. This is one I can leave in the mouth for a while. I love the heat that this one brings right away. And then it's just powered through by taste. Uh, that that sherry taste is there and for a 40%. I can't believe that I'm getting I can get that much sherry taste on it. And the burn is not one of those oh alcohol burn things. It's a it's a flavor thing. And from a 40% to even get that is massive too. This one also uh dark. I'm still licking the chops on this one. Dark, dark fruit taste on this one. A lot of those red, red fruits, um, even like a little bit of the figs. It's funny, I'm getting almost a little bit of a raisin one, which I haven't had too much on this before. I've noticed it. Uh, what are you guys getting from this one as well? I'm going to have another sip of this. <laughs> Someone jumps in with that. Mm. This is one I make sure that I always have with me. Um, it's a great when you go to Taiwan here. Uh, so one big difference from Taiwan and Canada you can drink anywhere here. You can walk down the street drinking. You could go into a police station if you wanted to drink, enjoy drinks anywhere. So drinking and dinner is a very big thing. Uh, you can go, they also have shrimping here where you sit around almost a big pool and you try to catch shrimp, which is a fun thing, but you bring a bottle of this. Anyone can enjoy this. If you're not a cast strength person, it's a 40%. Uh, it's a great whiskey. Now, as far as what kind of cast, so they do two different things in here. They do a first round, a long maturation for this one. Uh, it's in American oak. And then it's finished off in sherry or also cast. Uh, so if people are wondering about that, this does go through, um, a, I guess, a two process as far as cast is concerned. Or sorry, what they're batting together is two different kinds. So they have the long maturation and the American oak and then going to the sherry cast or also. Um, oh, one more. I might have to hit those beds later. Because I'll be sitting around here having a few more drinks all day. <laughs> Half done the bottle I see there from Brent. Um, when did uh, your group there receive these bottles? Was it just recently or? I the People started could start picking it up as of like around the 15th of this month. Mm -hmm. Some people have the the willpower to hold off and not, not touch it, but I'm sure not many. Wow. Wow. I don't know how you guys do that. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> I have that problem when I get a bottle. I mean, I'm not going to rip through it, but I definitely always crack it open right away. But for people who can do that, I mean, for a tasting though, it's always great. Personally, if you get the chance to try it the first time at the tasting. So the people who had the willpower, <laughs> let me know how you did it. <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's a good thing to try. I think with a lot of people and then get other people's feedback. I mean, myself, as for anyone, it's personal. This is my personal feedback and my tasting notes, which if you read distillery tasting notes, it might be a little different. And everybody there, I'm sure you're getting different things. But this is one I honestly am very, very happy that Cavan came out and did. Uh, now, 
I got a question there, a little off topic for people, for Sean. Are there any cigar smokers in your group at all? Not me, but I mean, it's been okay. a while. The, yeah. the, the reason I ask is um, back a few years ago, uh, for if you guys are familiar with the Yin Chang Master Distiller Master Blender or the, the old Master Distiller Master Blender, uh, we meet up quite often, even now that he's not with Cava and we'll still go out for drinks and stuff. And this one we have pretty much labeled as the Taiwan cigar malt or the sherry oak is what we, the one reason I kept it for the end here. Now, um, I'm not, it's not a boom. It's not a massive cast strength one, but it is one that goes great for anyone who does smoke cigars. If you're sitting there enjoying it, this brings out so many different flavors and tastes and stuff for it. But just as a drink, um, show you this one. I'm sure you guys are sitting with the same one. They're 46%. And also one thing I want to point out, if you see on the packaging here, this says Sherry Oak, it says Oloroso. The, some of the older bottles, they will just say Sherry Oak. Now they're still Oloroso. What happened is uh, Cavalans, their Sherry profile, and it's very, very extensive. They have the Fino, they have Oloroso, the PX, the Manzanilla, Amontillado, um, geez, it, it goes on and on the concert master one here. Uh, they just have this, the Solus Oloroso. They have so many different kinds where it came to a point where they had to be more specific with it. They couldn't just say Sherry. And so this is why the labeling on the old ones don't specifically say Oloroso, but it is still Oloroso. So they had to start doing that because people were wondering, you know, is this going to be one of the PX Sherry's or what kind it is? So oh, just different label or different saying that it's Oloroso, but it has always been the same along the way. So I'm going to jump into this one here right now. And the nose on, oh man. So a big difference with this, as I mentioned, the concert master, this one here, the concert master one, we just, the sherry cast. This to me is one of those whiskeys. I, as I said, I'll take it out when we're going out for dinner, going different places. I always have that one with me. It's a lighter. You can sit throughout the night drinking it, and really enjoy it. Now, the difference with the sherry oak one, uh, you get that ABV, but this is, if I was nosing this right off the bat, I would think this was a full sherry whiskey. I wouldn't think this was bad in any way. I wouldn't think anything else of it. Um, and just to let you guys know awards here, I'm looking down at for this. And if you guys are wondering, <laughs> as I mentioned there, that I wanted to make sure there's a reason that I had to bring the paper for it as far as awards, something like this. I mean, the list goes on and on for it, for this one. So for a sherry oak awards that they've had for 2020, um, this was a single malt whiskey category winner at uh, WWA, ISC gold medal, IWSC 2015 gold medal, 2018 outstanding gold medal, uh, San Francisco, the SF WSC 2014 gold medal, 2020 gold medal, IRS, you have 13 gold medal, 14th and 16 platinum, which is the highest thing that they can do there. And that's not handed out often. 2017, 18, 19, and 20 gold. So pretty much from 2013 to 20, it's been gold or platinum. It has not missed there at the San Francisco one. And the Whiskey Bible, it got 95 points in 2014 or 15. It says 14 here. I believe that might have been 15, though. Um, if anyone has got their Google machine ready, maybe you can take a look at that. But I think it was 2015 uh, Whiskey Bible. Or maybe 2014, 15 is how they do it. But this one is a beauty. This is when it's kind of, you're getting into the, those real sherry notes and Oloroso sherry notes. Uh, the concert master, the reason I really like that one, it has a sherry cask finish. You can get different kind of sherry notes and flavors from it. This one is uh, all Oloroso available in Canada. I'll let Sean answer that. Or I saw someone just ask about Oloroso. This one is, if it's available there. And there's his answer. Yes, he's busy drinking. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna enjoy this one with everyone cheers guys this is the last one on the on the panel here of four now one thing i noticed with this one compared to all their 40 46 percent um, creamier. There's a lot of cream to this one. 
And again, when I talk about mouth feel, I'm getting that all over for this. I get a little bit more at the back, uh, throat, top of the mouth there, the roof of the mouth. Um, oh, now's when I wish I could pull out a cigar and enjoy. But just with the whiskey itself, uh, this is, again is a deep, you're getting those deep red fruits. Um, and I love how I always pick up a little bit, and this might sound strange in a sherry one, but I always get a little bit of a coconut or a guava thing here, which is 100% due to Cabalan's new make. It's there, you're getting exotic fruits mixed with sherry, which is so nice. Uh, personally, I'm picking up a touch of almost like a little bit of a leathery, woody, which I appreciate if it's not overwhelming and in this it's not at all. And a couple of sips again, it just coats everything. You get that nice, nice tingle on that. Uh, Philip saying, this one you're saying is your favorite here out of the four so far? Yeah, this is my, this is my favorite for sure. It's it's, nice. I mean, I'm always a fan could, of cherry whiskey though, so. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're a sherry lover or you do appreciate sherry, this one will do it. And this is why, I don't know if you can notice, but one of the reasons I wanted this one for the end is not do you prefer one or the other, but this one does, it, it leaves that lasting note a little longer for sure. And it's one if you have it first that might affect the other taste that you've had the whiskey. Same with if you're having a peated whiskey, sometimes better leave it to the end because it does affect the taste. But this one, it stays with you and it's a great tasting, great tasting whiskey. Oh, and it is, it's so creamy. Yeah. yeah. And, and even compared to, um, I would give it the creaminess. The only soloist that I could say that kind of would be at the same level as far as creaminess is the ex-bourbon. You can get up there with their soloist, you get that creaminess, um, as opposed to their uh, oak one. It's not as creamy, but this, it, you're getting a sherry cask here that's done creamy, tons of flavor and everything they've done. They've been able to do it at 46%, uh, just beautiful. Goes great with Copenhagen. <laughs> mm. uh, how, where does Catalan get their peat? Um, they will say that their peat, sorry, I was just reading that question there that happened to pop up there. Uh, their peat, they're getting it from the UK area. They're getting it from Okay, here's one thing about Cavalan. They're very open with their dates. They're very open with what they're doing. But due to Dr. Jim Swan getting them a lot of, I'll say, ins in different things as far as, you know, where they get their cast selected from or French wine cast and different things, you'll see they just say French wine. They don't specifically say where. The reason is there's a lot of things given to them or that they purchase that aren't offered to other places um, or even other places in Taiwan. There are other distilleries in Taiwan as well. But as far as their peat, I will say it's from places that everybody knows and everyone would definitely say that's where it should be gotten from. Uh, but they can't specifically say these things because it's not like they're given special treatment, but the relationships, I mean, when you have with Dr. Jim Swan, he has those in the industry. He built those up and gave them to Cavalan and passed those along. Uh, so they're, they're from where you would expect it from, for sure. And then the peated that they did, they actually used their peated barley or peated malt that they did in the newer ones as well. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Sometimes people are like, start talking. We won't accept that answer. <laughs> but yeah, that's what Cavalan does. They're, like I said, they're very open with some things, but they don't want to wreck relationships or burn bridges along the way too. And which when uh, French wine, I'll, I'll mention that one again. So they've done French wine they had for their 10th anniversary. They did two different ones. Uh, they've had a few different French wines. I believe a total of five different French wine casts. And the only way you can figure it out yourself, and I'm going to say something without saying it, is use those letters that I mentioned, the first couple of letters or the first letter of the cast for solas. And if you drink wine, you'll be able to find it, you figure it out yourself. Like, you know, the Bordeaux region, they'll give you about that much information, but you'll, you'll find it out yourself. And uh, you'll see that they're getting top-notch things. We've had some tastings done and people were talking about uh, other companies or other distilleries that were buying sherry casts specifically. And they finally gave up because Cavalan was outbidding them on everything. When it comes to you want top quality and you don't worry about the price, and I mean, you're a company that's a billion dollar company with King Car Company, and if you're going for the best of the best, they're able to do that with their casts. And that happened with the French wine, it happened with the sherry, and it happens with everything they do here. As I showed you guys earlier, they threw the stills aside and said, we're not even using these stills. You're talking millions and millions of dollars there. 
buying stills. I love the taste, but it's a little too fruity for what we want. Let's get a whole another set of stills coming. So it's one thing you're always going to get with with Taiwan and with Cavalans whiskey here uh, is that quality. And they won't, they won't go for something cheap and try to just do it and knock, you know, throw out another expression. And to be completely honest, when this one came out, I was worried, oh, Jesus, did they just put out something to get Sherry at uh, kind of where someone can try it and, you know, they might like it or not. But no, that quality is there again with that. And I really, I really appreciate that that's how they do stuff here in Taiwan. Well, Cavalent. <laughs> I'm back to the Sherry Oak here. So Sean, you mentioned out of your four here, uh, the favorite you're seeing is the Oloroso Sherry Oak. What are you seeing on the board there? What are other people enjoying? Yeah, everybody, feel free to type in and, and share your thoughts. You know, um, what was your favorite and why? I mean, for me, definitely. I, I mean, the last one, uh, mostly because I like, I love Sherry whiskey. So mm -hmm. um, the bourbon was pretty cool too. Uh, and yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm stoked. I don't think there was a dud in the lineup. Yeah. Nice. That's always good. And I like when people are completely honest with stuff because feedback I get. Uh, so a little background on me. So I'm from Canada originally. Um, and I came out here in 2000. A friend of mine was coming out here to work. And I figured, oh, yeah, I'll take a six month holiday. So I came out in 2000, six months. Absolutely loved it. Went back, came back again six months. I went back and forth. Go Raptors. That's right. <laughs> and I mean, 20 years later, I've been going back and forth. Uh, normally, I'd be back and forth from Canada about four or five times a year minimum, uh, spending my time kind of half and half, well, a little more in Canada usually, but obviously last year and a half there. Uh, Taiwan for COVID hasn't been a big thing, but going back to Canada, I'm not able to do so. But what I meant, the reason I'm talking about that is, uh, so I became quite close with Cavalan um, and Ian Chang approached me uh, with our relationship and whiskey and being involved with whiskey and different things to see about uh, importing it to Canada. And this is what started Truth Malters. So Truth Malters isn't for Cavalan, but that's why we started was to bring Cavalan to Canada. And like you guys, I mean, I'm someone who loves whiskey. I'm a consumer myself. Uh, I'm someone who drinks it, enjoys it. If I don't like it, I'll let it be known. I don't like something. And I love that feedback because of the relationships I've built here too. I'm able to pass that on and actually to where it matters, where people might listen for those things. So it's always great to be completely honest with those kind of things. And also I'm sure Sean appreciates that for him to know what they should be bringing into five vines or, you know, what they don't. And, you know, we really, really do like to hear people's honest opinions on stuff. Well, I remember, I mean, I think Ian Chang was, in Calgary, like a year and a half, two years ago, right? Yeah, when we did our kind of our launch, uh, he was yeah. up in Calgary there. Yeah, yeah, because I think I met you very, very briefly. I was at that um, that uh, master class that that Chang put on, and I thought that was fantastic. I, I'd had Cavalan before that, but then of course, uh, kind of opened up my eyes to what is what and, they're capable of. And uh, no, it was, it was a fantastic presentation that he did. Well, that was actually May two years ago, because this month is our second anniversary for Truth Malters. And the great thing about him, I mean, you see him, he's just uh, just a humble person, very humble person. He starts talking and I guess it all has to do with, well, he started out his background was with uh, food and different things like that. And they got into the whiskey industry and then having Dr. Jim Swan kind of, you're under his wing, what he learned in his brain for the whole science behind whiskey and everything is just incredible. So every time we sit down and talk, I mean, it's, it's. Sometimes they're like, okay, back up. Whoa, settle down. Like the stuff you're talking about. And he gets right into it. And in Calgary, when we did the launch there uh, two years back, to have him there, that was his first time in Canada ever. Uh, and we were lucky enough to get there. And I mean, he starts talking and the way he, I, I don't want to use the word controls the room, I guess grabs the room's attention and how he's delivering stuff because you know it's honest. I mean, you can ask him a question. If he's lying, his face will go red. And he's like, I'm not answering that question. He won't just start talking about something. And in Calgary, he really let people know about Kavlan and he answered any question that anyone had right down to, there was some very detailed questions that were asked there as well. And I thought it was a great thing to have him there and to show, Hey, this is Kavlan. And uh, yeah, it's cool that you were able to be there. It was a small thing for us uh, to launch it um, in Calgary there, as far as we weren't able to bring in a lot of people and we wanted to. And for anyone who was there, people who weren't, I mean, just to let you know, Again, being a consumer, what we did for our launch was 
uh, there was no, no cost for anybody. It was come in, drink, enjoy it with us. It was a tasting paid for by myself, uh, just to show, Hey guys, check this out. Taiwan can actually make great whiskey. And Ian was there to, to show that and talk about that with people. Yes. And, and I thought he had such a great sense of humor too. And mm. uh, very, very humble. And, and his approach was fantastic. And you know, I, I, I quite enjoyed that. And I thought that <laughs> the most confusing question came with, with respect to um, the, 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 the lanyard that holds the, the Glen Clare, Glen Carey <laughs> ass uh, cup. Yeah, I had to answer that. And uh, my face was probably about this red uh, when I yep. was answering that too. So uh, we were, we just put well, lanyards all, on the all table. The people here have that Glen Cairn um, lanyard. So I'm, I'm wondering if they knew what it was when they pulled it out of the box. Well, well, if you guys didn't, I mean, enjoy this Friday night. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a, some people were like, oh, that's pretty cool. We get whiskey, we get a sex toy. What, what a great evening this is going to be. But that's not what it is, guys. That's for holding the Glen Karen glass, okay? Uh, <laughs> but you can enjoy it any way you like. But no, if uh, what Sean's talking about, the lanyards there. So they do hold it perfectly. Um, the top part's the kind of stretchy part that will go to the top of the glass. The Velcro will wrap around. Uh, obviously, these aren't Glen Karen ones. But so the stretchy part will go around the top rim of the glass here. And then the Velcro part, you wrap around the bottom of the glass. And it's great for whiskey shows. You know, you're having your whiskey on there. You don't want to do it with a full whiskey, but your hands free with a glass at least. And the glass is hanging there. You can go through and try different things and then just unclip it and get someone to put the whiskey in, which to me is great. Even now, when how, as far as these events, when they do happen again, it's, I know they're going to be different. So people can actually carry their own glass there. No problem. But if you do use it for other things, I mean, feel free to email Sean and let him know. That's, <laughs> that's your own thing. <laughs> no picks, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, about sorry, you know, sorry to interject there, Larry. Um, uh, Cliff had raised his hand a little bit earlier. I was wondering if he he had a question. Possibly. Maybe he was going to try out that line. You're, come on, Cliff. Where are you? We might have answered <laughs> the question. That's true. Oh, yeah. possibly. Yeah, possibly. Uh, so some some facts about Taiwan or for Cavan Distillery. So. 2005 is when they were kind of given the go-ahead to build the distillery and they actually were able to do this what you saw today excluding the garden hall the way it looks now but what you saw today and excluding the third warehouse which they're starting to build nine months is all it took for them to build it from very beginning until the end when it's ready as you see now it took nine months which is incredible and this is why they always refer to the distillery when you speak to mr lee or you see him in interviews as his baby because nine months would be the same as conceiving a child or when they're, sorry, when the child is born. So they're able to do this in nine months. Uh, I mentioned earlier about they're up to almost 10 million capacity. They are adding more and they're becoming one of the largest in the world. And he is blown away by the response that it's been internationally. He always knew the quality was going to be the best when he had what are considered the best people come in at the beginning to help out. Or I shouldn't use that. I should say the top, some of the top people. Okay. I don't want to sound like, Everything's the best, but some of the top people in the industry with Dr. Jim Swan and Ian Chang now, um, what he's been awarded as well. But to put all that together, they were able to do what they'd done. And then when the response started coming in from places such as Canada, they were just like, wow. And then when we started complaining, like, hey, guys, uh, we need to be sure that this great whiskey is available all the time. Uh, they've upped their capacity, they've upped their, uh, their limits that they can do on stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, they're up to about 85, 90% and what they're doing right now, and they can do a little more, but just an amazing place. And uh, being from Canada, I do want to tell anyone, if you guys ever come through, uh, you can get a hold of my my contact info from Sean or get a hold of me personally, Whiskey Truth or Truth Malters on IG and stuff. And you come out here, I promise I'll be showing you around the distillery, you know, Canadian hospitality and enjoy ourselves, enjoy some drinks and stuff. And I don't promise you won't be throwing up or I don't promise you won't be drinking too much. That's all on you. Okay. I do promise to let you have some great whiskeys in front of you, how much you drink. That's, that's totally your call. But I mean, I'm very proud of what Cavalan's done and I'm not Taiwanese uh, obviously, but I really love what they've been able to do and the way they did it. Um, just so if people are wondering, so how did Cavalan become what it is? 2015. Yes. Vino won the world's best whiskey. 
It was actually back in 2010, I believe 10, where their Cavalon Classic was entered into the Burns Night, which is kind of one of those events where you sit around and you have the top people in the industry trying some drinks and then they choose what's the best one. And even they were blown away when they found out that it was a, a Taiwanese whiskey that won that Burns Night. And that's what kind of set them apart where people took notice like, wow, this is from Taiwan. I can't believe that. And uh, they just kind of went from there and they keep expanding. They got a ton of expressions and they keep bringing new things. And they're listening to what people say as far as, hey, Kevin, can you guys make something that maybe a little cheaper, but still top quality that we can try? And this is what they're trying to do. They're really listening to consumers and trying to make things, you know, according to what consumers want. And we're lucky in Canada because when we do bring in casts and stuff, uh, myself being here, uh, I'm able to actually go through and pick casts. I get a lot of samples we can try and we have access to a lot of things that maybe people wouldn't have, uh, which is just lucky for being where we are. Uh, someone there I just asked about my IG. So whiskey underscore truth is personal one. And then truth underscore Malters is our business one. But yeah, I mean, I hope you guys are enjoying it and liking the drinks. I know it's your Friday night. I don't know if you guys need to get going or what, but if there's any questions, uh, throw them at Sean and he can let me know right now too. Yeah, maybe we do maybe we do an, an in-person tour with with the whole guild in in a, in a year or two. Who knows, right? If it was, if you guys ever set it up, Sean, I guarantee I would help you guys out as far as we could find proper accommodations, getting around and stuff. And the bar scene here is it's insane. It's an international, uh, great, great nightlife we could do too here. But the great thing about Taiwan to um, the Taiwanese, the hospitality when if we were to take you through here it's not only about showing you the distillery they will let you see the culture uh you go out for a lunch or a dinner you really see the taiwanese culture and really learn and feel it you left with an experience not only on the whiskey but on taiwan itself and if you were able to bring out the group whether it was from i don't know five ten people up to a hundred people whatever you could do uh we would set it up for you and make it work for sure so i mean set it up it's as far as uh covid right now that's the only problem but hey, guys, you come to Taiwan too, two weeks in a hotel room, you can find a lot of stuff to do too. There's a lot of, a lot of drinking going on around here. <laughs> Super cool. Any, anybody have any questions? <laughs> Philip is already coming. He's on his way. Okay. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, uh, you certainly, I mean, I think you've outdone uh, the expectations that, that, uh, that I had and that, that we all had on on what we could experience today. And, and I, I really genuinely appreciate um, you taking the time to, to bring us on this tour and and share some pleasure, whiskey Sean. with you. Yeah, I, I really, I enjoyed, I mean, it is great to sit down and actually talk to people from home and really, you know, people love whiskey like yourself and the group there and stuff. So I, anytime, I mean, maybe in the future, you guys bring in some other things we can go through and hopefully take a look in the warehouse and different things like that too. So um, I hope everyone enjoys their weekend and big cheers out to Sean five vines and the whole guild there and everybody. And I really hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, the bottle you got sent out and I got to get in that group because when I heard you were sending those out, I was like, what? I got to be part of this thing. <laughs> well, you, you wouldn't be the first um, uh, person who's done a tour with us and then joined our guild afterwards. <laughs> So yeah, you'd be in a lineup for that. Uh, well, hopefully I can get in there, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. And Sean, if there's no other questions, I'll let you get off to the family and stuff there and get back to your weekend. But to everybody uh, from Taiwan, from a Canadian there to the best of the weekend. I hope everyone stays safe during all these times and stuff. I know you're probably sick of hearing it, but I know it's important stuff and I hope you guys enjoyed it. But if you have any questions, you can let me know on Instagram or let Sean know and uh, we'll do our best to answer in the future as well. Cheers awesome. to everybody. In Cheers. Taiwan, we say gambe. 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 <laughs> Enjoy the weekend, guys. And Sean, get a hold of me if you need me to help you out answering anything or if anyone has any questions about stuff, okay? Yeah, for certain, I will. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, take care. Okay. See ya. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you had fun. I did. Yeah. Thanks, John. That was awesome. Thanks, Jer. Yeah. Good showing of people too. That's neat to see. Uh, Great to see everybody out here. As many people. Yeah. Although most people are camera shy. Yeah, I am usually a little bit camera shy, but I'm sure you're not. No way, man. <laughs>
That's good. Yeah. Well, I I hope everybody had a wonderful night and enjoy the weekend. Um, yeah, I'm I'm on the hunt for the next whiskey already. Yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> I already have some. No, it's, this this is so much fun. Uh, share your time with us and, and enjoy some good whiskey. So have a good night. Did uh, your did Mike uh, come on tonight, Sean? It looked like he popped in at the end. I hope it was he popped out and yeah. came back in, but but awesome. we recorded it, so hopefully. There's Arvin. Yeah, Arvin made it. Arvin. That's awesome. And then Rich, Richard, my dad. <laughs> hey, Arvin. Hey, Arvin. <laughs> yeah, glad you could make it. Yeah, it was awesome, actually. It was great, eh? Yeah, the tour is neat. Tasty yep. too. <laughs> it was yummy. I like their bourbon crack. Really good. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. I wonder where, where the bourbon comes from. I'm sure you wouldn't have told us. <laughs> oh, no. Rich. I don't think I think he's got probably signed an NDA and can't Yeah. Can't actually tell. They're not they're not allowed to share those secrets. No. <laughs> yeah. Well uh, I'm I'm really happy that, that I had uh, uh Jared and, and Arvin, you know, come in and join us for the, the evening. So I've been doing the past few on my own with everybody, but uh, but thanks for coming in, guys. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Well, I'll probably sign off here. Me too. I'll see you guys later. You guys have a good night. You too. Good night, guys. Bye, guys.